Critics of the president's plan were quick to respond to the aid announcement with some of the harshest comments coming from members of his own party. I spoke with one of them, Republican Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska, and asked for his response to Mr. Trump's claims of success. Whenever you're having a trade war, something is going wrong because when there's more trade in the world, Americans win. Frankly, our trading partners win as well because trade is a win-win. But when you have tariffs, they're going to lead to more tariffs, which lead to more tariffs, which lead to more tariffs, which all means less trade, which means Americans lose. We lose as consumers and we lose as producers. I think it's really important on that, that quote that you played from the president. The American people really need to understand what a bilateral trade deficit is. We've had one with Mexico. Mexico for 40 years in a row. And what that means is they sell us more stuff and we sell them more services or they invest in the United States. So regularly the president obsesses over bilateral trade product deficits where oftentimes it's not a problem at all. And with Mexico and the U.S., we've had win-win for 40 years in a row. Now with China, we got different problems and he's right about part of that. But that quote, that, that doesn't really represent what's happening in trade. That's going to lead to less trade and that means America loses. We want more America winning. Senator, will this $12 billion, though, that the administration is announcing today and help to farmers, will that make a difference? No. So first of all, we should just back up and recognize that American farmers in general, but especially Nebraska farmers and ranchers, I live in the most productive state in the history of agriculture right now. Our people feed the world. They don't want bailouts. They want more trade. And so when you have tariffs, they're a bad thing. And then you try to solve them with bailouts, another bad thing. You're not heading in a good direction. You're trying to make America 1929 again. And that's not what the people in the state I represent want. We want to feed the world. We want more markets. And we want more trade. Well, let me quote uh, the head of the National Pork Producers Council, who said today, uh, yes, this is a tough time, but he said, I commend the president for taking steps to provide much needed relief to farmers who were in the crosshairs of this trade war. Well, I appreciate people trying to make the best lemonade they can out of a bad situation. And so what you hear a lot of ag groups doing is needing to distinguish between the short term and the medium and the long term. And we should be focused on the medium and the long term. And what we want is more trade. And you really can't find pork producers or corn growers or bean guys or cattlemen around the world, around the U.S. You can't find people who think this is a, a great moment for America. They think we sit on the precipice of something really dangerous. They want more trade. And right now, the administration's uh, war r r approach is leading to more brinksmanship and more tariffs. We, we can do better than this. Do you believe, or let me ask this way, do you think the president is feeling political pressure on this? Are you and other senators, other members of Congress going to the White House to try to change his mind? So I, I talk to the president regularly about stuff like this. Uh, the, one of the things you, I want to commend the president for is he definitely has a listening ear. He's always willing to, to talk with you. And he and I have a pretty healthy wrestling match on these topics. We obviously don't see eye to eye on trade. I'm, I'm arguably the most pro-free trade senator uh, in this body. So we don't see eye to eye, but he is willing to listen. The problem is he's really obsessed about bilateral trade product deficits. And he thinks if you have a trade product deficit that it's like a real estate transaction that went wrong and somebody took advantage of you. That's not usually what it means. It usually means one country might be selling us goods and we're selling them services or they're making investments. And so the, the president listens, but right now the approach uh, isn't heading in the right direction. So you don't see a sign that he may be changing uh, his mind in any way or backing off in any way. And the other part of my question is any chance of that, that Congress might pass some sort of, uh, it, it might move to, to enhance its own free trade authority. Yeah, we should do that. So I support lots of different legislative vehicles that would claw back powers that belong to the Congress. So when we go back and do Constitution 101, it says right in there, Article 1, which is the Congress, Article 2 is the executive branch, Article 1 has the power of tariffs. Article 1 has the power of trade negotiations. And this institution, frankly, is really, really impotent. For about 80 years in a row, you have a bunch of people in Congress, both House and Senate, both Republicans and Democrats, who frankly love their incumbents 
incumbency more than they like making hard choices. And so people in this body have just punted power to the executive branch for a really long time. The things the president is doing, they're ill-advised, but they're not illegal because the Congress has been doing what's called statutory delegation to give the president executive powers for these negotiations. We should take those powers back and the Congress should start doing some of the tough business of why the people sent us here. We should be opening up more markets and we should have more trade. Right now, the president's approach is leading us in the wrong direction. But finally, just to come back to today's move by the Department of Agriculture, this $12 billion in aid, you're saying that's not going to make any difference at all? Well, so you look at bean farmers, for instance. All across the country, we have bean prices at 10-year lows, and we have lots of farmers in my state. They've been in my office three consecutive weeks. I've heard from lots of them at home, heading to church and heading to the store and Little League over this weekend. And you have bean par farmers that are really scared because those producers are looking at current spot market prices that are less than their costs of production, let alone making any money to pay the, for their kids' food. Um, they're looking at losing money. And so th this number, 12 billion dollars, it's an attempt to put a Band-Aid on a problem that's much, much larger. The bean losses alone are nearly $12 billion just this year, and that's just one product area. Trade wars don't work. Trade wars are never won. They're always lost by both sides, and we need more trade, not more bellicose threatening about tariffs. Well, as of now, no signs that this is a policy that's going to change, but Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska, we thank you. Thanks for the invite.